guys welcome back to another video today i thought i would uh, just share basically um my experience as a full stack software developer at uh, working at a big bank uh so i was working at uh, one of the biggest banks in canada which is called desjardins which is uh, in french uh, and basically i was a software developer there in their uh, venture capital division um, so I'm going to show you like what's behind, what's happening, uh, how our code uh, writing goes, um, what is our uh, full flow, what kind of persons were in your team. So let's just get started and uh, I think this could be interesting to you. First off, uh, in my team we were about 9 person um, plus me. Uh, so basically we were about 6 devs in total. Uh, so basically people who are just writing code all day. Um, after that, we had a database admin. So this is uh, someone who is just his only task is to make sure the database goes well, uh, do migrations against the database. So uh, basically, make sure all data is uh, stored correctly. And there was no way of like seeing real clients' data, which is uh, like crucial when you're working in finance. Uh, and then after that, we have someone who was a scrum master. So the scrum master is basically the the person that coordinates all the people together uh, in a small team so our team was called the DC superstars so all the teams in my division so in uh, Desjardins capital uh, was divided by DC uh, group name so we had like the DC superstars DC Marvels uh, you know like um, different names uh, on the superhero team if you want um, so this was pretty fun uh, and like once a month, we had a meeting, all the teams uh, together to just talk about like what we did this month, like celebrate our small achievements and everything. So, so that's the Scrum Master. And then after that, we have the Client Success uh, Manager, which is basically the person that uh, is going to be the um, intermediate between uh, the client and then our team. So basically, developers are expected to code, right, and to produce code. But if they're distracted with talking to the client at the same time, it's like a level of uh, time loss that is too high to uh, for in a big company. Maybe in smaller companies, like it would be okay if the developer talks directly, which like if you're building small apps and everything, that's all right. Uh, but when you're in the big business uh, type of day, uh, you don't have time to talk to those people because uh, usually clients don't have technical knowledge so they expect you to explain it to them so the client success person has a bit of technical knowledge usually so she, like he's able to or she's able to talk to the client about um, the upcoming features and everything uh, so he's basically like a middleman between the team and the client um, and for ourselves the client was basically like the financial division of uh, Desjardins Capital and we were like the programming team that was delivering to our another internal team uh, of more like finance people um, and finally you, you have the tech lead uh, no I'm not talking about tech lead from YouTube but um, you have the yeah I did a mistake right there but um, you had the tech lead so the tech lead is basically the one coordinating all the uh, the devs so it's basically a senior engineer uh, most of the time uh, was a lot of industry knowledge and usually is very good like in their their their, um, their language or their their structure uh, and basically helps all the devs um, to uh, basically if they have bugs or everything they uh, they communicate with the tech lead to get insights uh, on that uh, and basically the scrum master is gonna uh, talk to the tech lead so that the tech lead can talk to the devs uh, so that we you have another layer of uh, abstraction between uh, communication to the devs um, so and the average day was like pretty uh, standard so uh, at 8 a.m we would start uh, read emails start coding uh, reply to team messages basically then at 10 a.m. daily, we would have what is called a scrum meeting. So a scrum meeting is basically uh, a meeting where you just talk about what you're going to do today. So what will be your main tasks? Uh, do you have any blockings from the previous day? So if you were working on a feature and it didn't compile or something, uh, you're just bringing it up right there so that your tech lead knows it and everyone else knows it. So you can do pair programming if you have any difficulties. 
Um, and that's pretty much what a scrum meeting is. Uh, so at the company I uh, work, uh, we're doing uh, Agile. So Agile is basically um, a software development technique that uh, basically uh prioritize like tasks so we had uh jira which is um, a task management system where we had like uh tasks to be done then uh currently uh coding then we had uh, done so uh, that basically we could track like how many tasks can we close um and everything and all those tasks were basically like noted on the point system um which uh, we determine the, the point value of each task by doing something called um, Scrum Poker, which Scrum Poker is basically like a small game that you play that everyone rates the task uh, on a number. And then after that, you simply um, talk uh, everyone together just to determine what's the, the final number uh, weight to the task you're giving. So. That's pretty much it for the scrum meeting. And then after that, we would take a one hour break at 12 p.m. just to eat, uh, talk with the team. And after that, we had uh, our fi our final code session for all the afternoon. So three hours straight, uh, most of the time. And that's pretty much like for the team uh, kind of uh, ambient. So what kind of happened there in the team? Then after that, uh, I'll talk about uh, what happens to each developer individually. So what would happen is basically each developer would have his personal branch. Uh, so a branch is basically like a way to store code that is divided from another code base from someone else. So everyone could have access, let's say, to the Facebook. Um, uh, let's say Facebook was open source, so the code was public. They could have access to all the Facebook code. But each person on his own inv individual machine has access to a different variation. Um, and when that variation is validated, you can then uh, push it upstream to the main branch and basically decide like, okay, so I'm sending it there and the code is all right, it runs. So um, we don't need to um, keep it on local only right now. We can push it uh, for everyone. Uh, so this would happen and each dev would have his branch, would run code on it. Um, once a feature has been developed, what he would do is create a pull request. So a pull request is basically a request you're sending to uh, the Git branch to say, okay, I want to merge my branch called, I don't know, TO to the main branch, which is dev uh, for the development environment. So those uh, br those pull requests would uh, usually need to be approved by at least two uh, reviewer. Those reviewer are usually um, the tech lead and one dev just to make sure that the code runs, the code is, is uh, well formatted and everything. Uh, this was our coding process. So what would happen if uh, the, the pull request is not accepted? Basically, you would go there and you would read basically what the comments are on uh, the pull request. So what needs to be fixed and everything. Uh, this is the tech lead who would drop comments on everything on uh, how to fix it or basically what to check uh, again. Uh, and then you would go back to coding in your branch and then uh, redo the cycle. So uh, ask for a pull request. If you're not approved yet, you just go back to code. You push in your personal branch, pull request and everything. Once it's uh, accepted, so basically uh, all your code is well formatted. The tech lead has approved it. What you want to do is uh, basically this will automatically start a build process on our Azure pipeline. So Azure is the um, is the uh, Microsoft uh, basically uh, cloud server, which uh, allows us to basically like Docker allows us to run pipeline. So a pipeline is basically like a series of tasks that um, the server will run just before you deploy, just to make sure everything is all right. So we had 20 steps in this build process. We had a lot of security validation since the code is like. Um, very financial related. We want to make sure everything is securized and everything. Uh, and then we had code guidelines uh, validation. So we had uh, softwares like Sonic Cube, which is basically uh, like a code guideline and security uh, scanning tool. Um, so basically, basically each pipeline deployment would take about five minutes to deploy just because there was so much to do. 
um, but this is really like at the last time so you don't waste time eat every time your your pull request is not accepted um, to uh, do this process uh, so basically after that what would happen is when the, the build has passed and everything is uh, all right so if one step of that is not approved uh, you need to recheck the old pipeline again to uh, take a look where it broke what will happen after is you will have a deployment that is pushed to dev, so merged to the dev branch, which is basically the branch that everyone who codes um, will pull initially to uh, basically modify after in their own branch. Uh, so everyone will go from there. And then after that, what will happen is we will basically tell the, um, the guy who uh, talks to the client so the client success manager will tell the accountant in our case so the person with the, the domain knowledge um, so we have the technical knowledge in our team but someone knows the domain knowledge so this is all financial stuff that we don't know like uh, mathematics and like uh, dollar uh, terms um, and we would pu pass that to him show him how it works uh, what he could he can do and whatever and he would validate basically uh if it's the the feature you wanted uh, and everything if it's not validated what would happen is basically you go back and fix the feature you wanted you go back to code and in your personal branch pull request and everything all this loop again if it's validated what you will do is basically go to yes and then after that what will happen is the code is going to be ready to put in production um all that happens is basically you have a deployment team so in our case it was uh, a deployment team that would do this at night so basically they would uh, like um, log off from work at like 2 p.m uh, and they would come back at like 6 p.m till like 3 in the morning just to like make sure the deployment is right because in the day people are working in the financial sector on those uh, servers and database so like you cannot interact with them in production so i need to make this at night to make sure it doesn't break uh, for the people uh, the next day so uh, they will have a deployment team uh, at night doing this and once uh, the build is passed and everything it's in production you have your api clients which is the end goal in this um, so it's pretty much like the old process um, and after that, like there's so many things I'm not covering because it would be too long, but uh, databases have also branches and everything. So um, it's a really complicated process, but this is like a quick overlook of what in my like, uh, what it, it might be like if you're looking to going to bigger companies, everything. So I hope it clarified um, the process. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in comments. Um, and I'll feel I'll uh, make sure to answer you as soon as possible. See you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe, like, um, and if you're looking to get into those bigger companies, uh, make sure to start going and checking my other videos on how you can deploy services to your own VPS so that you can uh, become a software developer like a pro.